Hello, welcome to Pecan Corner. I mentioned when I was talking about um, um, cottage industries the other day that I make uh, silver jewelry and I, I use a technique that um, is basically a powdered metallurgy. It starts off with a powdered silver. It's mixed with a little bit of a binder and becomes uh, malleable. But it's 0.999% pure. By the time I fire it, it becomes uh, nearly pure silver. I have, uh, uh, I'm going to show uh, today uh, the, the pre-firing handwork that I do. Um, I create my own pieces. I sculpt an original piece by hand from scratch and then I use that to create a mold through which I uh, then cast my my pieces um, I've got to, I had an order uh, yesterday for for one of my uh, new men's crosses this is called uh, this is one I call uh, uh, Christ in the workplace and Paul also wants one so I'm going to make uh, make up a couple of these um, because it is is powdered silver, um, it, it's it, all of this that I'm going to uh, 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 going to work off of it is not waste. There's there's no waste to this, and I will save all of that. I'll even rinse my hands in a little bowl of water that I'll allow the silver to precipitate out of, so that I I can use it again. Uh, but I spend uh, once once the piece is molded. Um, I have uh, handwork at, at both ends of the process. Uh, there's a pre-firing uh, handwork, and that's that's uh, uh, pretty uh, uh, time-consuming. Uh, there's lots of, uh, of of simple simple sanding and and with different tools um, to take off all the excess that I don't don't want on there, and. Uh, I have to be able to do it in such a way that I don't break pieces of it. I've broken, I broke my loop off of that one a while ago while I was working on it. Um, so it's just a matter of, um, you might see this also called precious metal clay, but that doesn't really um, convey what, what it is because it's it's not like working with any other kind of kind of clay. It's it's not. Uh, not quite as malleable and it it needs some special uh, special touches it's also very you know it's expensive because it's made out of out of silver you can actually get gold clay although i don't work work with, with gold uh, but the silver content at the end of the game is uh, 0.999 fine um, and so it uh, doesn't tarnish as badly as sterling does. It's not as strong as sterling, you know, because that's why they add copper to it is to strengthen it. But, but at the same time, it doesn't it doesn't tarnish as as badly. Um, so it's uh, the, we we can now get a sterling silver silver clay. Um, I haven't tried tried using it yet. This is a. Uh, uh, has been a nice hobby. I wanted to work with precious metals. I used to make make jewelry um, to sell different different uh, different kinds of things using uh, um, using other materials, non precious materials. And I kind of reached a point where I was very frustrated. I really wanted to work with uh, with genuine materials, and I and I just at that time I didn't have the wherewithal uh, to you know to put together a true workshop and uh, so this really opened th th this pro product uh, really opened some doors for me there I have to I have a kill and I have a tumbler and I have some some I did have to have an investment in uh, in uh, processing equipment but uh, um, not not necessarily what I would have had to do if I were uh, were, were melting it and casting it that way Plus, I get a different look. This this material has its own its own special effects. I each piece, although I start out with a with a mold off of my original, um, it's a, a each piece has some unique character because it requires a lot of hand work and a lot of hand finishing. So one of the things I say about my jewelry is that it all looks handmade because it is. Uh, you might even find my uh, fingerprints um, embedded into a piece from time to time. So it, 
I've always collected um, antique Mexican pottery, the old redware and uh, yellowware stuff that's, you know, hand painted in little villages by people that, that didn't have uh, formal training but, but learned the family trade. And, and uh, I love that, that, that look, that just exuberant art. And um, so this jewelry kind of has that ability to, to, to maintain that. Um, at the same time as I was telling uh, somebody in the comments the other day, um, you know, there are a lot of people that would rather uh, rather pay a lot less and, and have, you know, a pair of, of, of sterling silver earrings that are mass produced in, uh, in Thailand. <laughs> and that's okay, you know, that's, that's all right, but that's, that's not who my, uh, who my customer is. Um, so, you know, who I'm, the person I'm working for is someone who wants a unique piece. Um, there aren't going to be very many. I make these individually one at a time myself. So it's only a question of, of, um, of how many I can produce. So, so it's never likely that there are going to be, uh, you know, hundreds of any one thing out there. Um, and, uh. Now what I'm doing is, see, I'm using different different kinds of sanding equipment. Um, I've got this for the for the back, little sand off the the back and make that smooth. And uh, I've I've got my uh, my silver content mark embedded there, and my my name, my little Tina H, embedded in that as well. And uh, I have to be very careful here because I do not want to. Uh, do not want to break off my little my little edges. So I have this little little uh, uh, little file that I'll use for for some parts of it. And then I have this little this is a called a bead reamer or a pearl reamer, and it's round. This one is shaped like a triangle. Um, and then I'll and I use it to. Uh, to shape it to uh, uh, smooth all these little pieces and remove remove excess. It doesn't need to be there. And this has to be done really uh, before it's fired because otherwise it becomes uh, uh, you know you're, you're spending a lot of time with the grinder and, and you're not really getting a good good result. There are some things that I use the grinder for, um, but usually it's because I have to clean up an, an error that I made by not, uh, not sanding enough at this stage of the game. My little bead reamer because it's a it's a little diamond file is what it is a little round diamond file, and uh, these are actually very inexpensive but they're very very effective. Some of my pieces I have a hole through and I have to use this to uh, enlarge the hole before before firing. This cross is designed. Um, after a, 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 it was inspired by a verse in Nehemiah where the men um, took the word of God in their one hand and their tools of their work in the other hand and they, they took the sword, sword in one hand and their tools in the other hand and they rebuilt the wall while standing watch uh, against the enemies of the city and uh, that's kind of what this one represents. It's designed to be shaped somewhat like a uh, uh, like a sword, um, but it's made out of uh, out of carpenter's nails, uh, not out of the not out of the the square nails that you that you see a lot. But this is this is just plain carpenter's nails um, that the uh, it kind of harks back to our our Lord's work as a carpenter uh, when he was here on this earth. How he made his living. Paul was a tent maker. Um, of course, we know some of the apostles were fishermen, others were um, tax collectors, which means they were accountants, 
um, or government, you know, employees, you know, so everybody had a job to do, even back then. Um, every, everybody has a, everybody has always had to make a living, and uh, that's part of, part of our life, is figuring out what we can do to make our living. get my uh, my magnifying glass so I can take a look at this here. I don't usually work out here. I have a little workspace but the lighting is not is not quite the same as for uh, This is like so many things. The, the amount of time you spend in preparation will help um, help the piece look better. The preparation makes all the difference. If I don't spend the, the time to get this in really nice, smooth condition uh, before I fire it, it's just not going to be as nice a piece. It's just not. Just not. And and. Uh, there won't be much that I can do to to, to it to uh, to improve on it if it doesn't if it doesn't come out well. So I need to take this this time and make this effort um, to get it done this this time before it's fired before I see the final result. And then there will be other there'll be pol time spent polishing it and. Uh, pickling it to get a little black in there and then cleaning the excess pickle off. I haven't found a simple way to to control my pickle yet. And uh, so it that usually takes me quite a bit of, of time and effort. Um, So, you know, it's more than the silver content. That's kind of one of the things. Um, by the time I finish one of these, I've usually got a, a, an hour and a half to two hours of handwork on that individual item. And so if you think about it, of course I have to pay my, you know, um, my own uh, uh, Social Security tax and Medicare tax. Um, the, the whole thing, that whole 15% or 17%, however much it is now, um, as a, because, you know, I do this as a... So, um, in doing that, um, that means that we, we can't just, uh, just go by what a, a wage from an employer would be. We have to, we have to add, in, add in our money for our taxes there. Um, And as somebody else mentioned, you know, we, we have to pay our accountants because they keep us out of trouble by telling us when, when we need to do our payments and our reporting and that kind of thing. And uh, uh, if we don't, it can be shocking at the end of the, at the, at the, end of the day when you get, uh, get a tax bill and you discover that that, that uh, self-employment tax comes straight off the top. Um, it, you don't get deductions. Uh, to to reduce that that's uh, that's straight off the straight off that gross income there we go
I know this is kind of boring, but I wanted to kind of show as, as much of this part of the process, these time-consuming parts, as possible. Um, it, it, you know, my customers may find it interesting um, to be able to see some of the steps that I go through. Um, the the fact that it uh, becomes a fine, you know, the fact that it's made out of a out of a precious metal helps. But the truth is, is if I were making this out of lead and spending this much time on it, I'd probably have to charge near, nearly as much. Um, although my material cost would be considerably lower. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, we've talked a lot about, you know, with with artisans um, trying to trying to price our work, um, we, we have to we have to understand who our customer is, and our customer is not necessarily the same person that we are. You know, if we are uh, uh, trying to raise a family, um, trying to put uh, trying to pay off a you know trying to pay a mortgage, um, you know, there's there's uh, we may be able to appreciate work that we can't afford. And I think artists have always uh, uh, run into that situation. You know, an artist who, um, who, whose work may command a lot of money may not live nearly as, um, as well as his customers do. And uh, that's, just, uh, that's just the way life is. That's the, that's, that's the reason that uh, patronage makes such a difference for those who can afford things. We, and when we can, we, we, uh, we try to patronize uh, the other people who, uh, who make these beautiful things or find our own work that we can trade with them um, so that everybody comes out feeling really good about the, about the bargain. All right, I think that one is um, I think that one is ready to uh, going to be ready to fire, and I've got a, a couple more here that I'm going to work on now. I want to show you. Let me get my little. First, I'm going to uh, use my stiff brush. These are old artist brushes but I keep them just for this. I don't move back and forth between other things. Um, this looks like we're just plain white powder on my hands, but it's not. It's powdered, it's powdered silver. It's micro pow uh, kind of a micro powdering process. Um, it was invented in Japan and it was used for industrial um, purposes uh, before, the, before artists began using it. And there are some less expensive uh, brands out there, um, but uh, I've tried them and they're not, they're not as good. Um, so what, what I use is I use PMC3, um, which is um, precious metal clay silver. It's by Mitsubishi. They, they are the company that, in, that developed the, the uh, process that enabled them to powder this material and, and uh, make it uh, malleable. Um, and so that's uh, <clears throat> that. That's what I use. Um, on, let me go get one. See, I keep it all in my little bag labeled silver. So anything that escapes in my powder, I'm gonna put my powder into, or any any uh, broken bits that I have. It will all go into this little container, and I will save it. don't clean my tools, I just leave them as they are. I do dust them off, of course. See, the, the brush will just take that right off of that, that little uh, emery file. And then I will reconstitute this at some later time um, when I need to use it for something else. And I'll save see my, my little old. This was just you know this is the backing from a, uh, from some uh, uh, contact paper, but because it was kind of nonstick, it made a good uh, a good surface for me to work over. And so I just keep that same piece and use it over and over and over again.
before I clean up my hands, I have another little a little cloth. This is a little sanding cloth that uh, it's it's actually got a um, got a real fine texture to it, uh, but it, it's almost like a polishing uh, cloth, and I will use this. Um, to kind of dust off and, uh, and give a little a little pre-fire polish to these pieces to the edges on this. You can't really feel it. It almost feels like a uh, you know like a flat piece of sponge or something. You can't really feel any uh, any grit or roughness to it. Uh, it's that fine, but it's for polishing and it's not for sanding. So what it does is the, the amount that it removes is is a very fine indeed. You can even use this material, this this, uh, this powdered silver, you can use it to make silver inlays in, uh, in things, um, in, in, in marquetry or, or uh, wood projects. Um, that really needs a little bit more there. I'll do this one. See, the more you know, you kind of have you reach a point when you have to reach a stopping point, but. Um, with this pro the, this part of the process, this finishing is one where you don't want to get in too big of a hurry. Um, most of the time, I'll think I'm done and I'll start cleaning up, and then as I as I take that final look, I see well there's a spot that's a little bit high that needs to come off, or or there's a spot that's a little bit a little bit rough. Let's see that side was a little high, and I took I took it down, and. Uh, Just want, just want to get that one smoother, just a little bit smoother. I broke that other one while ago, so I'm just really nervous right now about my, about my loop up there. I'm kind of afraid to touch it, but I need to, I need to polish that one off a little bit. You know how when you're doing having dental work done. Uh, the the dentist will kind of just keep polishing on things so that it won't uh, you won't feel that little that little little roughness on your tooth because otherwise your it'll just worry and worry you won't it you know, it's kind of that way with things like this okay yeah, let me see. That's good. That one's all right now. I'm pretty happy with that one. Okay. All right. That one's all right. I'm pretty pleased. That one's good now. All righty. Now, now let me get my fingers cleaned off here and uh, show you how I do that. I've got a little bowl. This all this that's all I use this bowl for, and this that that darkness on there is just silver, and I just dip my hands in there. I let the water settle, and I'll just let that water evaporate too. I won't pour it off. It'll just sit there after I'm done with it. And it'll it'll, uh, it'll gradually evaporate. But you you could pour it off, but you need to be real careful uh, because you it's got all that silver in it. And I'll just let it sit there and and precipitate. And uh, I don't want to get any water back on my back on my things that have dried because then I'd have to let them dry again before I could fire them. But uh, that's uh, that's the the the, the pre-fire finishing stage. So I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, if you like it, uh, please give us a thumbs up and click subscribe. Thanks.